Hello everyone. In this advancing era, dentistry is updating day by day. We have come a long way from a blood-filled surgical site using scalpels to a dry and clean surgical site using electrosurgical procedures and lasers. Yes, it's me Dr. Nanda Kishore Jayavarma from Kerala. Today let's discuss a small topic about electrosurgery. Through this session, I am planning to take you through electrosurgery and electrocautery differences, principle, its uses, some clinical uses and of course its comparison with lasers. Let's see its features. It has a single control which makes easy mode selection and intensity adjustment. The solid state circuitry eliminates warm up time. Dispersive electrode completes energy flow path. It has a waterproof foot switch for hands free activation. Swell cord connector improves handling. It is a high frequency electrosurgery system which helps to manage soft tissue with greater efficiency and precision. It removes unwanted tissue with ease. It uses radio frequency and it is an advanced monopolar electrosurge. Lateral heat. It is a heat which is caused in the surrounding area of the usage spot of electrodes which is caused due to the resistance offered by the tissues. How can we minimize it? Yes by controlling the electrode size making it smaller the lateral heat can be reduced type and intensity of current minimizing tissue contact time just in seconds you can move on this electrodes to minimize the lateral heat and keeping the tissue moist the different effect is caused by a change in the current type a fulguration is caused by a sparking current with disorganized high frequency a partially rectified current pulses but does not change direction cause coagulation. A fully rectified current causes incision and coagulation. A fully rectified filtered current is used for clean incision which is the choice for gingival recontouring. Let's begin the product of the day perfect TCS2. From the usage of scalpels in 1980s we have come a long way. Today we are using an electrosurgical units like perfect TCS2 from Coltine which helps us to get a clean and dry feel compared with its user friendly handling it is easy to operate and the appropriate parameters can be set rapidly it also offers us a wide varieties of electrodes for different purposes what is electrosurgery it's a term used to describe multiple modalities that use electricity to cause thermal destruction of tissue through dehydration, coagulation or vaporization. Now let's see the difference between electrocautery and electrosurgery. In electrocautery, DC current is used while AC is used in electrosurgery and during electrocautery, current does not enter patient's body while it does in electrosurgery. Let's see the principles of electrosurgery. Electrical current flows when electrons from one atom move to an adjacent atom through a circuit. Heat is produced when electrons encounter resistance. For current to flow, a continuous circuit is needed. In the operating room, the circuit is composed of patient, electrosurgical generator, the active electrode and the return electrodes. The electrosurgical unit is the source of voltage and current must be of high frequency to avoid nervous or muscular responses. The unit does its job by producing heat in tissues which is offered by the resistance of human tissue. There are mainly three effects possible by this unit like cutting, desiccation and fulguration. It can be used for a easy, safe and quick alteration of soft tissues with no bleeding, gingivoplasty, phrenectomy, opoculectomy, mucoperiosteal surgeries, and hyperplastic gingival remover are some of the examples. What are the different types of electrosurgical units? Yes, it's monopolar and bipolar. Monopolar has a single active electrode. In case of bipolar unit with two active electrodes, one is active and the one returning electrode. In this, the current travels from one electrode to other through a small section of tissue. In this slide, you can be familiar with some of the electrodes which includes coagulation ball type, loop type, straight fissure type, knife type, etc. Patient with a pacemaker, near chemicals like ethanol or chloroform, 
and patient with a history of radiotherapy are the main contraindication for the use of electrosurgery. Let's see how electrosurgery affects in wound healing. The histological effect of electrosurgery varies depending upon the power output, frequency, waveform selected, size and shape of active electrode. In comparative study of electrosurgical and scalpel wounds, it was observed that healing of electrosurgical wound was delayed. Electrosurgical wound had more inflammatory response and more tissue destruction. Both kinds of wounds, the viability of osteoblast was same and there was no increase in osteoclast which could indicate that bone resorption had not occurred. Its main uses include the control of bleeding and it helps us to access the subgingival caries easily and for tissue contouring. Widening the gingival sulcus, crown lengthening, exposing impacted teeth, incising the abscesses, removing hypoplastic gingiva, phrenectomy, etc. are its other clinical applications. Let's see how can we use electrosurgical system in restoration techniques. From the clinical aspect, a clean, dry working field is essential. Exposing the some gingival caries with retraction cord, hemostats and gingivectomy knives. The tissue will start to bleed when the adhesive systems are used, so it leads to failure of restoration. But when electrosurgery comes in this place, during cutting, the bleeding will be stopped and the blood, blood vessels will be sealed off, so which allows a good long lasting restorations. In this slide, you can see how easily and cleanly a subgingivally fractured cusp is taken out from the tissues. In the first figure, it is shown the subgingival fractured cusp with no access to reconstruct it. In the second and third figure, it has been shown that how electrosurgery procedure helps it to take out the fractured cusp borders with a minimal or no bleeding and dry field giving it the better visibility and ease of restoration. Let's see how can we use electrosurgical system in restoration techniques. From the clinical aspect, a clean, dry working field is essential. Exposing the some gingival caries with retraction cord, hemostats and gingivectomy knives, the tissue will start to bleed when the adhesive systems are used, so it leads to failure of restoration. But when electrosurgery comes in this place, during cutting, the bleeding will be stopped and the blood, blood vessels will be sealed off, so which allows a good long lasting restorations. Through the images in this slide, it is well known that how easily and cleanly the incision of gingival contouring is made with a straight knife-like electrode tip. This slide shows images of excision of hypoplastic gingiva with a straight knife and recontouring the junction with large blade. In case of periodontal surgery, it is not only used for straight cutting but also the rhombus and loop shaped approaches to contouring or coagulation is also very helpful. Coagulation plays an essential role in mucogingival surgery. There is often uncontrolled oozing after a graft is taken from a palate. The coagulation ball is used here to stop the oozing. The patient has fewer symptoms and further secondary hemorrhage can also be avoided. This slide shows a series of images showing how electrosurgery is used for correction of gingival margin. Here I have shown the images of autoclavable electrode sheets available with perfect disease 2 which includes a set of 8 electrodes like coagulation bowl, 45 degree straight knife, 45 degree tapered knife, round straight round loop, 45 degree long loop, straight long loop, 45 degree diamond long loop and 90 degree AP 1 1 by 2. From this slide, let us see some of the images which helps us to understand the difference between usage of scalpel and an electrosurgical unit for the same clinical situations. Let's begin those with the use of scalpel for a phrenectomy which most of you guys may have experienced clinically. The use of scalpel makes it a blood filled 
area which is difficult to control the bleeding and it may make the suturing techniques or suturing procedures a bit difficult. On the other hand, electrosurgery makes phrenectomy easier with a clean dried field and with no requirement of suture placement after the procedures. It heals very well. You can see each step in these images which is self-explanatory. This slide shows the easiness of using an electro tip which can be simply used as a pen which is used to draw a line. Just like drawing a line with a pen you can cut off the excess gingiva or use for contouring. In the following three slides let's see a case in which the patient is planned for an FPD from 1-2 to 2-2 to two region. But as you can see in the image the crown length of 1-2 and 2-2 is a bit smaller. So with the help of electrosurgical tips we are using it to lengthen the crown by removing the gingival margins. Now you can see how beautifully the final result has come. Here we are showing the removal of a hyperplastic gingiva using electrosurgical unit. In this case the patient's 4-4 has been caries for a long time which caused the gingiva to grow over it which obliterates the root canal orifices so it is decided for RCT followed by crown but in this case if I am trying to remove the hyperplastic gingiva with the scalpel you all know that how difficult it will be for me to control the bleeding which takes a lot of my clinical time so I try to use the electrosurgical tip this slide shows the final outcome of the case and also after the placement of crown. We all may have encountered pediatric cases with an unerupted tooth with the gingiva blocking its eruption. But in those cases we may plan to remove the surface gingiva. In such cases after seeing the scalpel and all the patient becomes uncooperative. In such cases also this electrosurgical unit is of great importance. Like a pen you can take it and simply remove the tissue with a minimal pain. Let's compare the deep pigmentation procedures using scalpel and electrosurgery. In this slide you can see the outcome of a deep pigmentation procedure done with a scalpel. You can see how blood filled and reddened is the deep pigment area. On the other hand with the use of an electrosurgical tip a clean incisions can be given and with a loop the deep pigmentation can be done with little pain and practically no bleeding. The healing will also be very nice. Let's see the disadvantages of a diode laser. The initial purchase cost a high, learning period is longer, it cuts much slower than electrosurgical unit, there is danger of the laser beam being used. Cutting large pieces of soft tissue is time consuming. Scalpel or electrosurgery can accomplish most technique faster and easier than lasers. Advantages of laser include minimal local anesthesia needed. It does not harm dental heart tissue. Can be used around implants, full metal crowns, PFMs, amalgams, gold alloys, metal bars or any other metal in the mouth. Laser can be a significant marketing tool for some patients probably because of wide usage of LASIK surgery. Advantages of electrosurgery It is cost effective than diode laser. The electrodes can be bent to meet clinical contour needed. Electrodes cut on their surface as well as their ends. Electrosurgery cuts extremely rapidly when compared to lasers. When on the proper setting, hemostasis is almost immediate. The cutting consistency, speed and depth of cuts are very good. After cutting, wood is nearly painless. Electrosurgery electro tips can be modified into pencil-like shape allowing extremely narrow and precise cut. The electrodes are self-disinfecting. Let's also go through the disadvantages of electrosurgery. You need to anesthetize the patient. For some, the term electrosurgery may cause some fear. 
The burning flush taste produced during the procedure may last for a significant period of time. Because of fast cutting potential and low tactile sense, overcutting of tissue may be experienced. Because of high heat production while cutting, electrosurgery should not be used around implants. This can cause loss of osseo integration of implants. These are some of the procedures where laser is preferred more as compared with electrosurgery. Tissue management around crown preparations, removal of soft tissues, corona to an implant, removal of soft tissue growth around a metal bar and removal of soft tissue very close to bone. In cases like pericoronitis flap removal, phrenectomy, removal of a lesion from the tongue, gingivectomy, removal of a small piece of soft tissue while making impressions for crown, removal of any large piece of soft tissue. In such cases, an electrosurgical procedure is preferred than lasers. Let's see what Shara Mithorabi has to say about the perfect ECS2. To deliver a high standard of dentistry, I rely on my tools and materials. This is why I use the state-of-art tissue contouring system Perfect TCS2 from Coltine. Perfect TCS2 allows me to manage soft tissue with accuracy and efficiency with less bleeding and a faster healing time. In periodontics, it is invaluable for reducing pocket depth. It is also useful in orthodontics by removing excess of tissues in order to attach brackets easily. Also in restorative dentistry by controlling bleeding in the gingival sulcus prior to impression taking or fitting restorations. Now let's conclude. Few technologies have a potential equal to that of electrosurgery for enhancing the efficiency and improving the results of soft tissue management. With a reasonable investment of time to acquire the necessary skills, electrosurgery can pay considerable dividends to both practitioner and patient. Perfect TCS2 can simply enhance the result of a wide variety of everyday procedures in our clinics. With the references, I have also included the brochure and catalog for Perfect TCS2. I hope you all got some knowledge about electrosurgery and its efficiency and its usage in our day-to-day -day clinical practices. Once again, thank you all for sparing your auspicious valuable time for hearing me. Thank you. Thank you so much.